Hey, welcome back. Today I am doing a repair on a Honeywell tower fan, model number HYF023WC. Uh, it is a pretty standard fan. There's no remote control for it. There's four buttons at the top with some LED indicators showing you the fan speed. And if you select, there is also a one, two, four, and six hour timer, six or eight, something like that. Um, it's a pretty straightforward fan to open up and, and uh, get into, so uh, let's just go into it. So the first thing you want to do is take the base off the fan. There's three screws holding it in. Once you have the screws out, you can simply pull the base off. The base actually splits into two, so uh, it's easy to remove. And then what you'll see underneath is sort of the stem for the bottom of the fan. And uh, in the stem, uh, at the base, you'll see three screws holding it in. Mine only contain two. I guess perhaps someone tried to open it up before. I don't know, but uh, there should be three screws there. And uh, once you remove those screws, you can go to the top of the fan, and you'll see uh, the uh, at the back side of the fan, there are two screws at the top where the indented handle would be. And there's also a screw hiding behind a little rubber plug. You'll have to pull out the plug to get at that screw. And once you take those three screws out, you should be able to open up the back of the fan. And to open it up, you just need to sort of pry a little bit on the plastic, the white plastic. There are a couple of notches up both the left and the right side of the fan that uh, you can easily sort of squeeze and uh, sort of work your work the back of the fan off. It shouldn't be difficult and there's no way you should have to uh, exert any degree of force. Uh, it's it's a pretty thin piece of plastic so, so it should be pretty easy to get it off. Once it's off you'll be able to have a look on the inside of the fan and you'll see the motor is located at the bottom and the spinning uh, fan itself is attached to the motor and at the top of the fan you'll see that it's sort of held in place by a couple of screws and a bracket and above that bracket you will find a little black box which will end up uh, containing the circuit board. Uh, at the bottom you will notice that uh, there is a uh, uh, spring clip and a little washer that hold I guess the, the bottom of the stem of the fan in place. So what you'll need to do next is uh, remove that um, clip using uh, snap ring pliers, snap ring clip I guess it is. So you have to use the snap ring pliers to sort of uh, fit the two ends of the snap ring pliers into the holes, squeeze it, opens up the spring and then you can just uh, slide off the, I'll call it a washer, it's the little silver round uh, part there at the bottom of the fan. From there uh, I went back to the top of the fan to remove that bracket in order to pull the the, the barrel fan, if you want to call it that, the barrel shaped fan. Uh, I needed to get into those two screws though and uh, you know the clearance wouldn't allow a normal screwdriver to get in there so I happen to have a small sort of socket head with a small bit that I was able to use. Another thing you might be able to use in this situation is like an offset screwdriver with a bent head. Uh, that should allow you to uh, get in there underneath that clearance. Once you take off the bracket you can uh, go back to the bottom and you'll notice that there's a set screw that's holding the bottom of that uh, barrel fan to the motor. So you'd unscrew that. Uh, you don't have to take it completely off but certainly loosen it far, far enough so that you can uh, pull the barrel fan off. And then that leaves you with uh, just the bottom of the fan. You'll see at the top of the motor just where the, the fan was located. Uh, and uh, that leaves you with this channel on the left of the tower plastic fan itself. Uh, you can unscrew the three screws and that'll show or reveal the cable that connects the top circuit board to the power located uh, where it's coming in at the bottom of the fan. When I initially opened up the fan I figured the best thing to do is look at the circuit boards. So I started at the one at the top. There's actually two circuit boards. I'll get to the second one soon. But the top one is located at the top of the fan. Once you remove the barrel part uh, you'll see it there and there's one screw and when you unscrew it, it reveals the circuit board. Uh, the black, black, excuse me, black plastic piece came off pretty easily. There wasn't a lot of fight to get that off. And then the circuit board simply just kind of pulls out. It's not held in there by anything. 
and that reveals the actual circuit board with the lighting and the other components that are on it. I did some initial testing on it just to check for continuity on the buttons and for you know uh, uh, resistance with the resistors. The circuit board itself looked fine. It didn't look like there was anything wrong with it uh, visibly anyway. There was no burns. There was no destroyed components. Uh, I didn't want to get too far into it without having had the opportunity to look at other parts of the fan. So I just did an initial uh, quick check on it and before I moved on. From this point, I went to the bottom of the fan and I took the motor off the plastic base. There were four screws holding the motor to the base. So it's very simple to, to remove that. And uh, beside the motor uh, revealed the, uh, the next black box, which contains the bottom circuit board. Uh, that is really just held in place by one screw. So that was very simple to take off as well. And it's easy to sort of move the motor out of the way to get at that box. So not a problem. Uh, once you take the screw off, the circuit board is inside. And it's, you know, again, very easy to remove. Um, I did an initial quick check on the bottom circuit board like I did on the top. I didn't see any sort of visible problems with it and so I didn't want to spend too much time uh, on it. Plus it's not a complicated circuit board. There was a, you know, a couple of capacitors, resistor, a fuse. These are very simple to check with the multimeter. Um, but again, there was no burn marks. There was nothing that looked like it was out of place. Uh, so my next uh, idea was to move towards the motor because quite often uh, the motor might be burnt out or there might be a thermal fuse that's a problem. Uh, most motors would have a thermal fuse regardless of the appliance so uh, this was something that I wanted to look at next. And uh, opening up the motor as I mentioned uh, sorry I guess I my previous picture showed it off but here's what it looks like there's just uh, four screws holding the motor onto the plastic base. It's easy to take those four screws off. And then to actually get inside to look at the motor, there's four screws holding the two parts of the motor together. And uh, those are, of course, very easy to take off as well. Just make sure you don't strip them. Uh, but once you take them off, the motor is uh, in two pieces and you will see the windings for the motor. And this is where you will locate the thermal fuse. In order to get to the thermal fuse, you have to pull the portion of the motor out of the casing. Uh, I used a, a screwdriver and sort of gently pried it out from both sides. There was enough space to get a screwdriver in there, a small screwdriver. Just be very careful. Um, mine wasn't in there very tight, so I didn't have to exert a lot of force. And uh, once you get the cap, uh, or the case completely off the motor, you'll see here where the wire would come in, to attach itself to the windings, and it's protected by uh, some string that's tying all the windings together, uh, and it has a couple of uh, zip, zip ties to hold everything together. And you'll see all of these insulated uh, sleeves, and you want to look for the one that's the fattest sleeve, the one with the uh, I guess the largest diameter because that's going to probably reveal where the fuse is and uh, well more than likely anyway. So I happen to take mine off and you can see in this photo where the fuse was located. It was bent, uh, it's supposed to be that way, it's bent over in two and slid into, a, into an insulated sleeve on its own. So you have to cut the rope, uh, cut the zip ties and then find the sleeve with the fuse in it and then what you want to do is test it with continuity to make sure that uh, there's continuity going from one side of the fuse to the other and if there isn't then that indicates that you are facing a blown fuse uh, which in this case happens to be the problem with the fan. So I uh, as you saw in the photos took all of the all of the sleeves well not all I took the one sleeve off uh, I took the fuse out because it did not have continuity, which meant it blew. I happen to have some spare fuses. Uh, I had one that's a very that was very close in terms of its um, temperature. It was a little bit higher in terms of the amperage, but I'm not too concerned about that. So uh, what you do is remove the old fuse, 
and then place the new fuse in circuit. It might be difficult to solder this because the fuse is rated at whatever it might be, 113, 115 degrees. And if you're soldering at a higher temperature, you might just blow the fuse for that reason. Uh, so you have to do it very carefully. You might want to try to use some heat sink on it, put an alligator clip on it to redirect the heat away from the fuse. Whatever it is you need to try to do. Uh, I think I ended up very quickly soldering one end and the other. I think I just wrapped it around there and just sort of uh, cinched it down so it's not actually soldered on one side. I, I didn't want to take that chance of burning out the fuse. So that uh, in review is this fan's repair. It turns out uh, not spending too much time on the circuit board was a good idea because in the end it was just simply a thermal fuse that had blown and prevented the power from going to the motor. Uh, now that the fuse is replaced, the motor works perfectly fine and the fan's been fixed. So I hope this video may have helped some people who might have some problems with their appliance. Maybe your fan has the same issue. Uh, obviously be very careful when you're dealing with these um, appliances because uh, you know, you're know you plugging it into a wall and you're receiving high voltage. You don't want to electrocute yourself. Uh, all of this repair work was done with the uh, fan unplugged. There was no need for it to be plugged in at all. So uh, I hope this video helped you. Uh, feel free to ask any questions and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much. Have a great day.